Congressman Dave Reichert, thanks so much for joining us. So what do we know at this hour about the victims and Congressman Scalise's condition? Well, we, we know the good news is that uh, everyone is uh, alive. They're in, in the hospital. They're being treated. They're being well taken care of. Um, the last uh, information on uh, the whip, uh, Steve Scalise, was that he was in critical condition, may have another surgery, but um, I, I think that's you know all to be released by the medical professionals. Critical condition, uh, you know, normal is a normal thing when you have surgery. Uh, you usually come out of surgery unconscious because you've, you're on medication. So. Um, we'll just keep our prayers, uh, thoughts and prayers uh, with the family and, and pray that he fully recovers as well as the other victims. And you were not at this baseball <clears throat> practice, but you spoke to someone who was. What did they right. describe about the experience and what happened? Yeah, so I mean naturally these, these are friends of mine that, that uh, were there this morning. I was not there, but uh, uh, you know, as reported, 50 shots or more, uh, people taking cover wherever they could find cover. Um, uh, Steve was down on the ground. People were trying to get to his his side to give him aid. Uh, some did reach him and were able to put a tourniquet on his on his on his leg. But uh, you know the, the the main thing I think here to to remember is that um, because Steve was there and he has security because he's part of leader, leadership, yeah. um, the cops were there, the police were there, Capitol police and officers. the Capitol police officers were there. They were able to take swift action. The police uh, in, in Alexandria were there in, in uh, less than uh, four, three, three or four minutes, I think. And, um, and so the police response was fantastic. The cops, as I would, you know, um, as I would do and have done, run toward the danger. And, uh, and what happened is that they got wounded also. Um, fortunately, their wounds are recoverable. I'm, we're praying for them too, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, if they hadn't been there, uh, this could have been a very, very serious strategy, tragedy with more deaths and more injuries. So what kind of questions does this raise and what conversation are you mm -hmm. having now about security measures moving forward? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the security has always been forefront for me and foremost on my mind with my st uh, staff, especially my district offices back here in D.C. The, the offices are secured. Uh, you have to go through checkpoints. But in my district offices, they're just in you know your regular office buildings, not built for security. So we've installed cameras in the parking lot, cameras at the front door of my office, both offices in Wenatchee and Issaquah. Uh, we have locked doors, and um, we have intercom system. We have, a, again, a, a, a video that you can see the person standing at the front door. Do they have an appointment? Don't they have an appointment? My staff and I went over security uh, procedures again today, reminding them, look, when you come into the parking lot, make sure you scan the parking lot when you arrive for anything that looks unusual. Maybe arrive in pairs, maybe leave in pairs. Um, a lot of times, sadly, uh, events like this spur copycat events, and so I'm concerned that that sort of thing may may happen again. Are other <laughs> members taking this as seriously? Or are, are these conversations happening on campus right now today? Yeah. So so this morning we had a, a briefing from the uh, sergeant at arms and the police chief from the Capitol Hill Police, and they went over some of the you know most obvious security protocols that that have been in place and are in place for most offices across the country, but then encouraged them. Uh, the members to take additional precautions if they haven't got certain things in place and and then also uh, to report you know if you see something say something sort of mentality uh, don't hesitate to call also use your local police department and your sheriff's offices uh, if you need them if you're having events make sure that your local police and sheriff's offices know where you're going to be that you may expect trouble um, even if you don't let them know where you're going to be so they know there's an event the congressman mm -hmm. or woman is in town uh, I mean, these are all common sense things, but uh, I think, you know, sadly, um, as members of Congress, we're, we're required to be in the community, out and about, be a part of the community, and sadly, in today's world, um, we have to be very, very uh, cognizant and aware of um, our, all of our surroundings to make sure that uh, that, we're, that we're safe on our staff and, and lastly, constituents are safe. Right. Lastly, there's been a bipartisan message of prayers, support, and unity. What is the mood on Capitol Hill mm -hmm. today? 
Uh, so we met before we went on the floor where you heard some of the, for you, the words from the speaker and from the minority leader. Um, similar words spoken by both of them, but other members uh, also got up and said, you know, uh, and, and I've said this over and over, we are a microcosm of this country and people look to us, they hear us speak, they watch our demeanor. Um, we have a role to play in this. We need to look in the mirror. Our behavior uh, is is watched and is sometimes sadly imitated by those people that might be easily influenced by harsh words. And uh, I think uh, the, the the members of Congress need to be more aware of every word they say is heard uh, and watched by someone somewhere in this country. And we need to be more respectful. Uh, we need to be examples, good examples to the rest of the country in respecting each other's ideas, thoughts, and have a respectful debate and discussion on the issues versus anger, name calling, and then, you know, just today, resulting in violence.